Did you know that this year St Ninian's High School is 65 years old? To mark this momentous occasion, we thought we'd do a brief video history of the school since it began. It opened in 1927 as the Douglas High School. Since then, pupils have come from all over the south of the island to be educated. In this video, we're going to meet some of the pupils from each decade since the school opened. And they're going to reminisce about their past experiences and their remembrances of their time here. So, why don't you come on in and have a look? Oh, that's better. The school has recently undergone tremendous refurbishment and extension. We're proud of our new facilities, and quite rightly so, and we feel that particularly the school now has a lot to offer. The first thing you notice is the new foyer. It has been totally redecorated, and we feel that it makes both pupils and guests feel much more welcome and comfortable in the school. It leads into the school hall, and that's where we're going to meet our first guest, who started here in 1927 as a pupil. So, let's go and meet him. What year did you begin at St Ninian's High School? I started here as a pupil in 1927, on the day the school opened. What were your first impressions of it? We came in from, I came in from Port St Mary on the train actually as an 11 year old and, and this was quite a shock. It was a, it was a shock in, in two senses. A, we were starting at a new school, 11 year old, and secondly we travelled from Port St Mary to do it and this was a double shock. And we were very subdued, all in short trousers of course in those days until we were 14. What was the food like at St Ninian's High School when you were a student? Food? You're joking. There wasn't any food. We came from Port St Mary on a, a train that left Port St Mary, Port Erin at about 7.30 in the morning. We came into Douglas on the train, walked from Douglas Railway Station up here. Some pupils had walked for two miles before they, they, they reached the train. We put in the full day then arrived home at about half past five, six o'clock in the evening, and the only food during that time was a packet of sandwiches and a cup of tea for which we paid one penny. Can you tell us any unusual experiences you had when you were a student here? In 19... February it was, I think it was February 1929, I was in the second form. And I t I've told you already about the travel on the train and it had snowed on this particular day, heavily all the morning. The snow was obviously building up. And to our great delight, a message came around to all rooms, will the train boys make their way to the railway station immediately? Which we did. We got down there, and the train set off at about quarter to three. But we couldn't get through to Port Aaron and Port St. Mary. And in fact, the train stopped firmly in deep snow drifts just between the, just on the Bellicella side of the Blackboard's Corner, which you will know. And there we were, and there was no way we were going to get any further that night. And this was all very exciting, because we all trooped out of the train, made our way into Bellicella, that was quite a step, through, through deep snowdrifts. And the, the girls, who needed protection, obviously, were taken into the homes of the citizens of Bellicella, into private houses. And all the boys were taken to the Russian Abbey Hotel, and blankets and travelling rugs were produced. And we spent the night on the floor of the bar of the Russian Abbey Hotel. The next day we went south and not north. We, we walked to Port St. Mary and Port Aaron, and no train got through for about three days after that. That was quite an occasion. When did you return to St. Ninian's as a teacher? I returned to St. Ninian's, having spent seven years here as a boy. I then went to university, then came the war, and I was in the RAF during the war, and I came back here as a physics teacher in 1947 and remained until 1980. So I have a 40-year stake in this school and all. How many secondary schools were on the island when you were a student here? In those days, there, was only, there were only three 
secondary school was on the island. Ramsey Grammar School, which served the north. This school and the Park Road School, Douglas High Schools, for boys and girls, respectively. Those were the only secondary schools on the island, apart from that, from the public schools. Yes, the catchment area for this school in those days was from here through Onken to Laxey, from here right through the Central Valley, through Crosby, St. John's, and Peel, and Dorby, and going south, Santon, Balasella, Castletown, Colby, Balabeg, Port St. Mary, Port Aaron, all those people came to the school. But on a selective basis, you see. So there were only, I mean, having said that, there were only 350. 350 pupils? There are about 1,100 here now. Of all the new facilities, which do you find the most impressive? Well, I haven't really been around the school very, very, very recently in a, in a very comprehensive way, but as a physics teacher, I mean, I marvel at the physics equipment which is coming through now, and which came through in my later teaching days. You see, I was thinking about this this morning, and when I was teaching A-level physics here in the years before I retired, my A-level physics pupils were doing experiments in radioactivity, which I didn't do at Manchester University when, when I was doing an honest degree in physics. And that gives you some idea of the, of the way that the, the things had changed during that time. What year did you begin at St. Ninian's High School? Uh, 1933 I started. I came from uh, Russian primary school. How did you come to school every day? Oh, on the train. We left home at 7.30 in the morning and we arrived back at half past five in the evening. Did you have any teachers you really liked? Uh, I think the, peop the ones that made the most impression on me were Mr. Shaw and Mr. Carr. I remember them, yes. What makes you remember them? I don't know. They, I think they were probably kind. Did you have any teachers you were really frightened of? Oh, absolutely, yes. Mr. Lancaster was horrified when he came inside. And funnily enough, my impression of, of the school, when I tried to think the other day, is looking into the school and I could see this long corridor with the masters going around with their gowns flapping like a lot of vampires. And I think, you know, that's the effect they had on me. They, they terrified me. Can you tell us any amusing experiences you had while you were at school here? Well, I don't really remember anything. What I mostly remember is school that gave me a sort of satisfaction was seeing uh, George Formby doing his TT film up the road. and We enjoyed that. favourite subjects at school? I tended to incline towards the, uh, the sciences and um, uh, physics and chemistry. Um, I enjoyed very much. Uh, I, I did enjoy French. Um, in, uh, as I entered sixth form in 1947, uh, it was my intention to, be, uh, to go to university to study dentistry and uh, I had to do, um, to do biology. Now, uh, up to that time, no biology had been taught in this school, uh, and it was uh, a requirement for entrance to university. So somehow I had to be taught biology. Now, Mr. Callow, Mr. Bob Callow, who was a, a charming man and who was the uh, assistant headmaster, had taught biology in his early teaching days, and he got his books out, and he started teaching me and another uh, young man who went to uni university to do pharmacy, um, uh, some basic biology, but it really wasn't sufficient to, um, uh, d to bring us up to scratch. So somebody hits on the bright idea of sending us down to the girls' school where they've been teaching biology right from the first form. So uh, we spent um, two afternoons a week um, in the last two years at school uh, doing theoretical and practical biology. Uh, two young men sitting amongst uh, 25 or 30 girls. We quite enjoyed that. How did Park Road compare with this school? 
Well, uh, yes, uh, but as I say, I was only there two afternoons a week, and it was, I was there for a purpose. Um, if my memory serves me right, Park Road School was a very much older school uh, than St Ninian's, which was opened in 1927. Um, it, it showed in the, in the construction of the, of the building, of the brick and the playground and everything like that. Um, but, uh, and it wasn't, in those days, anywhere near as warm in the winter as uh, St Ninian's was. Can you describe what the uniform was like? The um, uniform was, um, uh, we wore up till a certain year, and I can't remember which one, but we wore short trousers till, um, I think it was third year, up to and including third year, but I stand to be corrected on that. Um, a dark blazer, a, a dark, beg your pardon, a dark um, sweater and, and, a, and a navy blazer which had a, a badge on it, which was the old school badge of a, uh, a Viking longboat, and it had uh, a Latin motto, Velus Remisque, underneath, which meant with sails and oars. The school colours were red and blue, and of course uh, we had our um, old school song, which referred to those colours in, that, in those days. Can you tell us any amusing or unusual experiences you had while you were at school? Well, um, one of each, if you like. Um, I've already mentioned that there was food rationing in the island at this time, and um, there was uh, a, a boy in my class whose parents had a small poultry farm. Now, um, uh, poultry farms meant eggs, and in rationing, I think we were only entitled to one egg per person per week in those days. Anyway, one of the masters realised that this person had a poultry farm and he prevailed upon him that if he had any spare eggs, would he kindly bring them into, into the school for him. Now, there's uh, nothing that a pupil, uh, pupils hate more than uh, boys who um, tend to uh, favour a master, or even vice versa. And this poor young man used to appear with six, six eggs tucked up his sweater, uh, and uh, he'd be pursued by the rest of the school who would punch him in the chest and he would have a rather nasty, messy egg omelette uh, lodged between his shirt and his sweater for the rest of the day. Uh, and unusual experiences, well, <coughs> a lot of our teachers, the younger teachers, were away at the war, and uh, we had uh, some lady teachers. Um, I recall two of them who were quite attractive, uh, vivacious young ladies, and um, let me say at the same time that the Isle of Man during the war was a training camp for the Royal Navy at Jerby and for the Officer Cadet Training Unit at the Villiers Hotel. Um, we also have the Royal Navy at um, um, Cunningham's Camp, which is now uh, ShopRite, and we had um, HMS Valkyrie, which is a shore-based ship um, on Douglas Promenade, uh, in the Loch Promenade area, adjacent to the Villiers, in fact. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, these two young teachers that I'm speaking of were very often uh, seen in the company of uh, the Royal Navy. I suspect it must have been the uniform. And um, wherever they went, they were always spotted by a pupil. And uh, certainly every morning, uh, next morning at assembly, um, it was reported uh, amongst the school uh, where they'd been seen, with whom and when. Of all the new facilities, which do you find the most impressive? Well, I think the, the computer complex, um, which I think you've called the Harry Carr Centre, is, uh, is very impressive indeed. Um, it's, it's, uh, there's plenty of space, it's airy and it's light, and uh, I'm sure you've got everything there to uh, help a young man or a young woman on their chosen career. What were your favourite subjects at school? My favourite subjects were the, the very few that I was good at. And I liked French because I was very, very good at it indeed. Uh, I was also good at Latin, but I didn't necessarily like Latin. Uh, I didn't like the sciences, sciences because I was no good at them. I liked history because I was pretty good at that. I disliked geography intensely. Uh, and I liked PT. That's what we called it then, physical training, uh, because I was quite good at that as well. Not a lot I really, truly enjoyed, without a doubt.
Can you describe what the uniform was like? There was a cap, one of those little round caps with a peak with a school badge on, a blazer, dark blue blazer. Again, you could have the school badge on, I think. And then you were expected to wear grey shirt, grey trousers, black shoes. Again, it was wartime, so there was a certain amount of difficulty in getting boys kitted out properly. But I think there were still shops that supplied the school uniform, uh, as long as you had enough clothing coupons to, uh, to be able to get it. Not all boys wore the school uniform, largely because I suspect a lot of their parents couldn't afford to buy it for them, so they came in ordinary school kit. So the school uniform was, was optional. And um, on the whole, I think most of us, as we went on through the school, rather dropped it. We didn't like wearing a uniform very much, and nobody really tried to make us. Did you have any teachers you really liked? I had one teacher I respected very greatly, and looking back on it now, I suppose uh, if I'd have been older, I would have, I would have liked him for the man he was, and his name was R.K. Callow, known as Bob Callow and he was the deputy headmaster. And he was, without doubt, a very fine man and a, a fine teacher, although terribly strict. And in those days, when you got things wrong, you were caned. You might get a couple of cuts across the hand. A, a harsh regime, but I mean, we didn't know any different. We didn't challenge it, and certainly my parents didn't challenge it. And he taught maths. And I was bad at maths, so I got a lot of things wrong in his classes, and he, he beat me quite a bit. Did you have any teachers you were really frightened of? Most of us were a bit afraid of a man called W.E. Shimin. I think it was W.E. Ernie Shimin, Ernest Shimin, who was very, very tall and had a little moustache, and he used to stroke it like that. And he was very sarcastic with boys. You, boy! And... <laughs> he would be, he would put you down. He, he, he was the cane as well, but we were afraid of his tongue rather than, uh, than his punitive uh, resources. How did you come to school every day? Uh, come on the school train to school, into Douglas, and then bus up to the school, or walk up to the school. Um, left school, appeal every morning, 25 past seven, and then got the train back at half past four in the evening. Well, can you tell us any stories about travelling in on the train? We used to get up into all kinds of, uh, I wouldn't say they were naughty things, but we were uh, bad boys at times, like we used to punishment for any of the younger lads who have misbehaved. You should put them out through the window, uh, put the window down on top of their head and make them go from Peel to Douglas like that. Or, or very cold mornings, it was very bad, I can assure you that. Uh, another bad thing we used to do was they mainly spit into three carriages, you know, open, one, two, three. The centre carriage, we used to put all the junior lads in the middle and be four seniors sitting in one end and four the other end. And cold mornings, we used to make them take all their raincoats off and <laughs> throw them over to us, you know, keep us warm <laughs> and make them sing for us all the way to Douglas and or vice versa. But you see get up to all kinds of pranks out through the window on top of the roof. And when you got round the other side, they'll have, they'll have put the window up so you couldn't get back in, like, you know. <laughs> all very dangerous, actual fact, but in those days, of course, you never thought of things like that. And of course, you used to have the firework times. It was absolute chaos, you know, fireworks in the carriage. It was highly dangerous, but nevertheless, it did happen, like, you know holes in the side of carriages, pushing fireworks through into the next one, you know, explodes a window, wasn't anybody seriously hurt, but lots of uh, funny things, you know. And can you tell us any amusing experiences you had whilst you were at school here? One uh, thing that really sticks in mind, we used to have Mr Jones as a science master, Welsh gentleman, great character. Um, he was doing an experiment, which is at the far end here, we used to have a science room at the very mm. end here in those days. And he, had, he was doing this experiment and this retort, and it was bubbling away. I can't just remember the scientific terms now. And when the, this cork was pressed in, and he was saying, now, now look here, boys, what happens when I put the tap on? And he turned the tap on, this thing was bubbling mass. And there was one massive explosion, you know, and we all ducked down under the desks, and we couldn't stop laughing, like, you know. And he was left with just the, the cork and a, a bit of the neck of the bottle. 
and the whole whole ceiling was splattered like no. So we we couldn't stop. I can still see him to this day looking over and saying, "Joke over, stop, boys, joke over." Like you know, and he was absolutely shattered. And Bob Cord, of course, moving a big. He was a science ma uh, master, well, he moving the big. Uh, I think it's hydrogen sulfide thing. You know, the stinks like bad eggs. Is that the one? He was moving from one desk to another and dropped the whole lot, like you know. And I hit the desk, hit the deck, and smashed it about a thousand pieces. Of course, the whole school reeked of it, like you know. We, we thought that was another hilarious incident, but uh, very difficult to think back on. On funny thing, obviously, there probably were hundreds, you know. Mm -hmm. But little things like that stick in your mind. Mm -hmm. And another, uh, another little point: we used to have a Mr. Chisholm, a Scottish art master, and he used to have a habit. I've given you something to do, and I can always stick to me in mind. He, he came, he shouted at me one day, Now bring your painting out here, you know. So I brought it out, and I stood at the desk and near the painting in front of him. And he must have been looking at it for about 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour. And his only words were, He said to me, And what is this? You know, <laughs> and I thought it was a fantastic work of art. <laughs> How does the size of the school now compare with when you were a student here? Enormous. It's increased to you know. I just look when I'm passing here, the new buildings and all to the school and what it used to look like. I just had a look this evening. What used to be all the playground and area now is now buildings. You know, like the the field itself hasn't changed one bit. And I always remark to people when I pass of all the years I've, all the years I was at the school and all the years since, the two football pitches still remain in the same places, uh, same areas that they were then, you know. Well, what do you remember about the front of the school? Masters only, and I looked and there was lovely gardens there. That whole corner was a lovely garden. And now it's just uh, massive cars all pushed in there like, uh, well, I'm not saying what I'd like, you know, it's like, but it's, it's, it's a shame, really. My times have changed. People use cars now. Of all the new facilities, which do you find the most impressive? Very impressed with the sports facilities. Very impressed with that. Very impressed indeed. I think it's a good thing for the school. We did have a nice gym there, but I'm going to say people are more sports orientated now. People, everybody plays sport now, and I think that facility for the school is first class. Mr. Dow, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. What was the school uniform like? Um, these are trick questions, aren't they? they um, it was a sort of red and blue thing, but at the time, um, the, uni the uniform was in fact played out. It was phased out altogether for lots of the school. And uh, there was a lot of controversy about this at the time. And it was quite rare for boys to wear school uniform. So um, it was generally, though, as far as I can remember, sort of navy blue with red trimmings. Did you have any teachers you really liked? Yes, there were teachers um, that uh, I and others liked. Um, uh, it's terrible to have this put to me because I haven't thought about this before. Um, there was somebody nicknamed Spider Webster, was an English teacher here. <laughs> and, uh, but I think everyone was frightened of. I've forgotten his first name, Callow, the deputy head here. The head, uh, Morris Holmes, was very popular here. Can you tell us any amusing experiences you had while at school here? Well, again, it's quite difficult, but I do remember that when I was giving the vote of thanks at the prize giving, um, could have been 1955 or 54, in the Villa Marina, I was already very interested in Manx and could speak Manx reasonably well at the time. And I said to the head I was going to give the vote of thanks in Manx, and he wasn't too keen on this. But nevertheless, I ploughed ahead with this. And the guest of honour at the prize giving was the government secretary, who gave part of his reply in Swahili, which I thought fitted the occasion very well. What did it feel like to return to St Ninians as a teacher after so many years? Well, it feels pretty weird because it's, to a large extent, it's not too peculiar in that it's difficult in some ways to identify with the same building. Um, when you come in from the um, which side, the Sitninian side, and you've got the old classrooms, it, it's exactly the same.
but the, obviously the bit we're in now and all the new extensions are completely um, new and so I can't really I, say it's the same building so it isn't too strange it does feel distinctly strange when you walk past the old recognizable classrooms What were your favourite subjects at school, Jeff? Well, I think it was really maths and history. I was very keen on maths. Um, we had a very good teacher, Jade Hogg, um, who got us all going. We'd had a rough time in Balakamin on maths, but it's, he got it all around, and I think we all did very well on exams on maths. But maths was my favourite, and um, then we had Bob Curfee on history. That was my other favourite subject. And what were your favourite subjects at school, David? Well. It's interesting to hear Jeffrey say maths. In fact, in my profession now, one might have thought I was good at maths, but I really struggled for a while. Um, he's quite right. Mr. Jake Hogg is no longer the teacher. He was um, very instrumental in pushing me on and getting me through maths. I won't tell you the methods he used, <coughs> but they were quite uh, revolutionary at the time. But having said that, uh, maths, I did become, uh, maths did become a favourite subject eventually, but history was really my subject. I really liked history. And, we were all rivals mm. and, uh, in history uh, at that particular time. Mm. Did you have any teachers you really liked, Jeff? I think it would be because of the favourite subjects. Uh, I remember Mr. Curfee and uh, Mr. Hogg, two of the favourites that uh, I got on very well with. Mr. Curfee was um, in the history, we used to go on these out excursions, on these historical mm. trips out. Mm. So we got quite friendly with him, and uh, he was a very good teacher, very nice person. Did you have any teachers you were really frightened of? The headmaster was pretty ferocious, Mr. Lupton. Lupton. I rather feared him at the time. Mm. Can you tell us any experiences that you had that were quite amusing, Jeff? Well, that's very hard, really. Uh, talking about Jakey Hogg, I always remembered uh, just typical, really, the way he used to uh, teach us. We'd take an examination, there was one boy, Phil Neen, and <laughs> he wasn't particularly good at maths. And so he ended up with naught out of 100 in this examination. And, and Hogg just said to him, well, Nini said, I oh, can give five marks of spelling your name right, but you couldn't even get that right. And that's that was right, just his right. way. Right. And he used to give David, <coughs> and he used to be the, right, so let's have a bit of fun now, we'll go over to Saunders sort of thing. And it made David, I think, it made David more determined to actually yeah. beat this man and get him out. That was his way of teaching. Can you tell us any amusing experiences you had, David? There was a chap to PE called Roberts, I think his name was. <laughs> Good nickname for him. Uh, yes, he <laughs> sort of sent us out and stayed here, and then we came back in encounters. So we used to send us across country, which was quite a long way. It was out Balnard Road and out to Braddon and round through Tremode, just during the lesson and, and back. And uh, we'd had enough of that, really. So we used to just shoot along Balnard Road, walk down through Portishy Avenue, wait for a sufficient time, run up Bray, Bray Hill very quick, which we thought was quite amusing because he was never out with us and he never found out. But he, he used to take us for cricket too and he would lie down on the bank, wouldn't he, in a nice summer's day and he'd uh, just lie down and we'd go off and play cricket and one day he went to sleep. <laughs> so so we all we went just, in. We just played and went in. <laughs> and he was still sleeping there. there. Sleeping on the top bank. Yeah. Right. Well, I joined the school uh, in September 1975, um, and I started as a sixth former. I'd been to a school across to do my O-levels and came here to do my A-levels. Uh, and I have to admit that my first impressions of the school were somewhat frightening. I was a come-over, and I walked in through this really imposing front entrance, down these high, narrow corridors, and I saw this poster. And it was a big poster on the wall, and it had keep your island tidy in it, with a nice hand with rubbish going into a bin. And somebody had crossed out tidy and written the word Manx. So I had these visions of huge uh, home cottage fires uh, being set alight by the Manx Nationalist Party. 
And then when I came down here, which was my tutor room, and I was waiting outside in the corridor there for my tutor, I was all nervous, and there were these people who I thought must be Manx nationalists and looking at me as a come over. I was very, very nervous. And suddenly, from down the corridor, I heard this booming voice shouting, Make way! Make way! And I looked up, and there was this bloke over six foot, waving a stick in the air, with heads ducking underneath it, and this leg shooting out. And I thought, blimey, I hope I'm not taught by him. And, of course, as luck would have it, he stopped right outside the door, and said, right, ladies and gentlemen, come in. And my heart was in my mouth, and I nearly ran and sort of swam across the Irish Sea to be anywhere but here. And that man turned out to be Mr Barrett. Um, now, we talk about teachers, and we talk about teachers. And Mr Barrett was uh, one of the most influential people, really, in my life. He was marvellous. I think if it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have survived uh, through my sixth form. Um, that first initial impression was totally wrong. And, he... and when I returned here as a teacher, um, which was two and a half years ago, it felt really, really strange. It felt like, in a way, coming back, and yet in a way coming to a totally new place. The changes that have occurred since I left, and I left in 78, got here in 1990. So in the 12 years, the changes have been tremendous. One of the most obvious is this room. This was my form room, and it is now my teaching room. This room had a window there. And it is now a wall. And Mr Barrett used to love looking out of the window. We all loved looking out of the window. We used to line up there and see who was late for school and uh, see who of the fourth years were down on the field smoking and that sort of thing. And it was a bit of a shock to walk in here that first time and just be confronted by nothing, well, but by a wall. It was a lovely view out there. But the reason for it is really a very good reason. And that's the sports hall. No longer are, is our lunch disturbed by pounding feet upstairs. We now have a sports hall with incredible facilities that we just never had and we would dearly have loved. Every school needs a library and when I was at school it was in room 8 and then it was in the hall and then it was somewhere else but I can't remember and we as sixth form were sort of thrown out of one place and put in another. Um, um, because we didn't have actually a sixth form centre then either. That was the gym. Uh, but this library combines reference through books, reference through computer, I think it's called a ROM or something like that. It's got computer facilities for students and staff. Mm -hmm. And it has video facilities, drama facilities, that really surpass uh, anything that we could have hoped for. And I have to admit that it is the most impressive uh, of the improvements as yet. And that includes a sports hall, which in itself is marvellous. What year did you begin at St Ninian's High School? What year? 1975. April the 14th, 1975. I remember it well. What were your first impressions of it? Having come from England, from a relatively new school that was only about six years old, uh, it came as a bit of a shock to a school which was, well, I don't know, about uh, 50 years old at the time. It was quite different, I can tell you, because apart from the sort of generally old fabric of the building, the furniture, I recall, was very old as well, very old-fashioned. Um, one of the things I remember well were the desks. Many of the desks were actually attached to the chairs. There was like a big uh, a tube that went from the desk along the floor and then up onto the chair, which tipped up a bit like a cinema seat. Yes, it seemed very old-fashioned uh, to me at the time. What was the food like at St Ninian's when you were a student here? Um, I've always regarded that the, the, the school dinners uh, uh, has been absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed them then and I enjoy them now. One of the things they used to do in those days was a thing called uh, 
Strawberry Delight, I think it was. It was sort of angel whip thing uh, with a little dollop of squirted cream on the top. And I, I used to remember that, hundreds and thousands as well. And I used to spend all day looking forward to dinner time. I still do that now, and as you know, dinner time is a good hour further in, into the afternoon than it used to be, and uh, I, I, I look forward to my dinners, yes. Can you describe what the uniform was like? Uh, well, um, I remember that the school uniform we had was the same uniform as we had for the, what was it, the Douglas High School for boys, as it was. And everybody used to wear these black blazers, and I've resurrected this black blazer for to this afternoon. And um, I thought we all looked very, it all looked very sinister and dark. Everybody going around with these black blazers on. They all used to be, lads used to congregate in corners and it was all very black looking with all this. Now you, now you have this sort of nice jolly grey uniform which is, is not really quite so impressive. Strange enough, black has been in fashion, hasn't it, for the last few years. So maybe everyone would have gone for the black blazers, I don't know. A bit more with it perhaps than the grey, I'm not sure. Well, we had these ties. This was the tie I wore to this school. It isn't a St Ninian's High School or a Douglas High School tie for that matter. I have an idea, this is a girls' high school tie, but nobody was much interested. This was the one I wore as, as a student anyway, together with the blue shirt. That was the uniform. Grey or black trousers, I remember. And we all had to have a proper school bag. A proper school bag to keep our books in. What were your favourite subjects at school? Um, I liked all of them, I'm afraid. I particularly liked geography. I particularly liked English. Um, less keen on French, and I wasn't a big fan of maths, I must admit. I regret that now. Oh, and perhaps my least favourite of all was PE, and I desperately regret not liking PE because I would have been a lot fitter then and now had I liked PE, and I wish I'd done more of that, but at the time I loathed it. Did you have any teachers you really liked? Again, I liked all of them. I regarded all the teachers uh, with a great deal of um, respect and admiration. Um, a lot of them were great characters, and we used to spend almost as much time speculating about the teacher and where it lived and where it, what it did at night time and what its interests were and what it would wear the next day, which was usually exactly the same as what it had on the previous day. They were great characters. They used to strike me a bit like the teachers in the you know, the Bash Street Kids in the Beano, you know, that sort of old fashioned -y look. And of course they all seemed very old too. I'm now, what, 33, and I remember hearing that one of these teachers had just turned 30, and I remember thinking that was really old, really ancient, almost old enough to be drawing your pension. And uh, it's very depressing to have reached that age now, I must admit. One of my favourite teachers, I suppose, on the basis that he was more of a character than uh, even the rest of them were, was a chap called Dave Ingham, Mr Ingham, the head of English, and he used to teach in this room, room 14, and as it happens that was my first lesson here. And um, Mr Ingham taught me in this room, and um, yeah, he I particularly liked, Mr Ball, the maths teacher I liked, um, who else, Mr Madrill, head of geography, I liked him, yeah, I liked them all really. Can you tell us any amusing experiences or incidents that you had while you were at school? Well, uh, there are plenty of amusing incidents I can think of. There was the endless amusing incidents I could relate about Opportunity Knox, which was the end of uh, the, uh, what was it, the autumn term um, talent show they used to have. Many of the things I remember about that don't bear repetition. There were several amusing incidents from Speech Day I could relate and several amusing incidents from um, the swimming gala, which sadly, thankfully, we no longer have. Uh, one story that does come to mind features my old friend Mr Ringham and this room number 14. Uh, one of my classmates was a chap called Marco Leonetti, and uh, Marco has since gone on to become very rich and famous as uh, one of the country's top hairdressers. Uh, Marco, having sort of Italian ancestry, he used to dress in, not the school uniform, but this really smart black suit. And uh, Dave Ingham uh, used to, um, he didn't have that much money, well teachers don't as a rule. And he used to seize the opportunity to get a really nice haircut every so often. And we'd come into this room and Dave Ingham would stand at the front and he'd say, get your books out, get your books out. This was an O level English class, remember, fifth year. Get your books out, he'd say, do some reading. Marco, uh, uh, let's get to the back of the room and let's go and have a haircut. 
and we'd all sit there pretending to read our books and Marco would reach into the pocket of his suit and he'd have his scissors and his comb there and he'd be snip, snip, snipping on uh, Dave Ingham's hair and the guy would go out with a nice fancy haircut done by this lad who became one of the top hairdressers in the Dolby, poor old Dave Ingham's hair on the floor. And we used to find that quite funny. When did you return to St Ninian's as a teacher? Uh, 1982. Uh, came back in 1982, did three years as a geography teacher, went away to join the Department of Tourism and Transport at least said about that, the better. And then after several other jobs, including tram driving, uh, I came back here uh, as a computer teacher in, I've forgotten now, 1990, I think. How does it feel to be a teacher in a school where you were once a student? Originally, um, it was quite interesting to see what went on behind the scenes in the staff room, for example. Um, I always like to think I got on reasonably well with the staff when I was here as a student, so it was no particular big deal to come back and work with them um, as a colleague. Uh, but it was very interesting to see some of the fun and games that used to go on in the staff room. Um, and uh, yes, that was, that was one of the things I remembered. I remembered that um, we used to, as I've said before, speculate endlessly and talk about the teachers and what they got up to and it surprised me that the teachers used to speculate endlessly and talk about the kids in the staff room. How does the size of the school now compare with when you were a student here? Um, the biggest difference I think is the sports block. Um, when I was here as a student the gymnasium was what is now the computer room. Um, the area where the sports block is now was two portable classrooms where business studies used to be with typewriters in there, I well remember. And it was a big open area with tennis courts and bicycle sheds. And then between when I left here, went to university and then came back again, that big sports complex had been built. And then later on, in the first year that I was teaching here, 82, 83, um, the old gymnasium was subdivided into the sixth form common room and uh, the computer rooms that we've got now. So that was, that was uh, one of the biggest differences. Plus, of course, this craft block. The craft block also appeared in between me being a student and coming back as a teacher. Previously, the craft facilities had been located. The woodwork room was in what is now the art room, room 15, and the metalwork room is in what is now the TV studio. That was the metalwork room down there. And the art room, of course, was in what is now the staff room which had been the art room since the school opened, it was purpose-built as an art room, north-facing, you see, so you don't get the sun coming in through the windows, and that was the art room. And a long history it had too, that art room, I remember, what with Archibald Knox and others in there. What were your favourite subjects at school? Subjects? I enjoyed history at the time. I enjoyed doing history a lot. I enjoyed the sciences, although I wasn't very good at them. Uh, but I did actually enjoy some of the practical side of them and the uh, chemistry and physics I enjoyed a lot. Uh, and I enjoyed the languages as well, you know, French, German. English literature wasn't a strong point of mine, but English language was good. Can you describe what the uniform was like? Uniform? Um... Good question. I think they changed the ties. I had one of the old school ties, I think, which was red and blue striped, and a nice blazer, which I'd had since I was about four, I think, um, and dark trousers, and I think a white shirt, or was it a blue shirt? Blue shirt, possibly, at the time. And I think I always wanted to wear a polo neck sweater, but I think they were banned. They seemed to to and fro between whether you were allowed to wear polo neck sweaters or whether they were too scruffy. Uh, being naturally lazy, I wanted to wear my polo neck sweater, but I think I was banned. Did you have any teachers you really liked? Tim Sale, yeah, I always got on well with. and actually uh, went and did a little bit of work with him after I left here, but uh, he was always a fine character, we got on well. Um, Peter Clegg, who did chemistry, was always a, a fine chap, I always thought. Uh, who else was there? Uh, oh, yes, English teacher, and I can't think of his name now. Uh, Mr. Uh, Colin, oh dear, it'll come to me in a minute. Clayton, that's right. A fine character. One of life's great eccentrics. Yeah. Did you have any teachers that you were really frightened of? I was reckoning, yes. <coughs> and, uh, Mr Masterton parading round. Always used to put the willies up everyone, especially if you were late for assembly in the morning. I remember being caught on one or two occasions and uh, getting a severe reprimand. 
Can you tell us any amusing experiences you had while you were at school? Amusing, amusing, but clean. Uh, <laughs> there were one or two, I suppose. I always remember some of the best times we had with, with when we had astronomy club and got astronomy club going again. Um, when we discovered the observatory was there, and we used to like going up. If it's at all possible, we'd, we'd have meetings at Wednesday lunch times. I think it was, uh, which usually involved scrambling up to the observatory and pretending to sort of focus sunspots or something on these lines onto sheets of white paper, but it's really an excuse to go ra running around the roof and banging on the, the upper skylights of classrooms and scaring the willies out of people who are sitting there munching their sandwiches and such like. Um, and then occasionally we'd come here in the evenings as well with Astronomy Club and uh, sort of run right and draw large airships on the blackboard and turn them around backwards and this sort of thing in the hope that someone would pull them down next morning, which occasionally they did. Of all the new facilities, which do you find the most impressive? Oh, I do like the, the, the computers. Ah, yes. I really, really wish I had been a little bit younger and had had computer training as sort of a compulsory part of my education when I was here, because I do. I am one of life's great computer illiterates now, and that I really don't know one end of a computer from the other. And had I been a few years younger, I think I would have had compulsory computer education. I think it really would have benefited me. Looking at the, the gear they've got now, it's, uh, it's incredible, wonderful. <laughs> and did you have any teachers you really liked? I used to like Mr Knight. He's since left. He I taught remember. me German. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And any teachers you were really frightened of or didn't like? No, there was none really, which is probably just as well since I've come back to the same school to teach. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was in the lower sixth, we used to have eating competitions between the two sixth forms. And there was one time Balakameen's sixth form came up to our common room and they had to eat things like tea bags and raw potatoes and if they were sick they had to eat that as well. And then, of course, Balakameen wasn't supposed to be in our common room and someone said the head was coming or the deputy headmistress or somebody and I've never seen the common room being cleared so quickly. All of Balakameen went, the hoover came out, the floor was hoovered, everything went back to normal and nobody ever knew. And how does it feel to be a teacher in the same school where you were a pupil? Um, it's quite nice in a way because I know my way around and I didn't have to get to know too many new names and I think I'd been left long enough for it not to be awkward. How does the size of the school now compare with the size when you were here as a student? I don't know about the number of pupils but the building certainly has with the new wing and down at Park Road that's grown. By oh, the new wing you mean the, the library the facilities library, yeah. and all that? And of all the new facilities, which do you find the most impressive? Well, I think that must be the library, yeah. Is there anything in it particularly that you, that you find impressive within the library? Uh, I think the resources centre. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Miss Cruz. Of all the new facilities, which is your favourite? Uh, all the computers, all the Apple Macs in here. Oh, prob probably the same. Um, also the library. Yeah. It gives you a wider span of information there. Yeah, yeah. They've also got computers down in the library now, which they never used to have in the library. Yeah, you, can, you can find out more or less anything now. Because when we first arrived, the library was actually the school hall. Yeah. And you'd be scratching around for books and stuff. It wasn't that good. They hardly had any books when we first arrived. No, no, you just put a disc in the computer and you go down and you went on it. What clubs do you participate in? Play like basketball every dinner time at school and yeah, in the clubs like after basketball, like in the league and that. Playing most sports. Basketball every dinner time. I've usually got a sport. Uh, a couple of nights a week after school. Play for Laxi. Um, football. It takes up quite a lot of time. What other activities do you do at school? Well, we're doing this video at the moment. Just to, to promote the library. 
when I when the clubs are usually cancelled or or something at a bit of a dinner time, I usually come up to the computer computer room and do some work or something. In making this film, what do you think of the difference between the other people's experiences and your own? What we do now is nothing like what they used to do. Because we've got all these new facilities when they used to just have like one classroom for the whole day. And we're, we're wandering from classroom to classroom every lesson near enough. Science labs and here. Yeah. They never had all these Apple Macintoshes and all. And no, no big sports complex or the library and the resource centre. And the new television editing the suite and all. Mm. What new facilities would you like to see in the school in future? On the education side, there's not much more that you can get because there's a library and the resources centre and all the yeah. computers now. Yeah. Joanne, what were your first impressions when you arrived in this school last year? It was just like moving from one building site to the other, really. Because we'd been at Park Road and we'd had all the buildings and we weren't going to get to use the facilities and coming up here and walking into another one. Right, and, and you, Jenny? Well, I suppose it was the same, really, but, like, I expected it to be really big, you know, God, I'm going to get lost wherever I go, but it wasn't really, it was just sort of, like, the same as it was before, but with more rooms and... OK. Stuff, so... And, Jenny, what were your impressions upon returning to school at the beginning of this year? Well, oh, much better it was, because it was like, everywhere you went, you had to be careful because it was painting or building or whatever, you know, and you get a mouthful of dust, so you came back and you could walk freely around the corridors and use all the new facilities and everything, so it was really that much better than before. Yeah. And would you agree with that, Joanne? Yeah. I, w I like you could use all the corridors again. You didn't have to sort of wa walk your way around different areas just to get to one part of the building. Yeah, I mean, they've got most of the things that we always asked for and stuff, so not really that much more you could want. So you think, all in all, the school is well resourced? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think, I think we need to um, get more involved with um, different countries and different yeah. schools, and then we could do exchanges. I mm. think that would be good for schools. Okay. Yeah, not, not over in Britain, but like foreign schools in France or Germany or wherever, you know. Third world? Yeah. 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 Right, well, that's something to look forward to. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Chris Kane! Well, Bill, how are you? Good to see, see you, Ezra. Fancy putting you in one of these. Yeah, nice to see you haven't put on any weight. It's no, really no, just, just around the middle, the top and the bottom. And you, ah. you filled so, out a bit since your boyish days too, I see. Yes, I thought it brings you down here. Well, I was just, um, but no, visiting, really. Just visiting? Just visiting. And yeah. drying your hands and on the visit. And drying my hands after, after the visit. Yes. Well, it's my chance then to say that you are, in fact, a contemporary of mine, or I'm a contemporary of yours, is that not right? We're both contemporary, I think, Bill. I think so, yes. And still regarded so. So, yeah. hey, listen, could you join us in a video about the school? Well, as long as it's nothing contentious, I dare say. Nothing, so. nothing contentious no, whatsoever. I dare say. I Just can answer a few questions. Yes, as long as my lawyer uh, could be contacted if the need should arise. By all means, by all means. Okay. Yes, uh, is he a good lawyer? Not particularly, but he does everything for a bottle of whiskey, so he's good enough. Right. So what year did you begin at St Ninian's High School, if you can remember that far back, Chris? Oh, let me see, William. That's a difficult one there. With a little bit of thought, 1974, I think. <laughs> now, Chris, I want to take you back. You said that while you were here, it changed from being an all-boys school to being a mixed school. Yes, that's correct. Although, to say it became a mixed school is perhaps overstating the case a little bit, I think. Because, not that, not that in any way I would find myself being a... Uh, biased towards the male point of view in the male domain of a high school, but without a doubt, in our sixth form years when the school became uh, co-educational, there was still a bit of a competitive element and I don't think it really became mixed. The girls were all sit together and it was a question of who could do best uh, in each subject, or in some cases worst, but nonetheless I think it retained as two separate groups both sitting in the same classroom rather than being truly integrated, which I hope it is now. Well, so do we actually. Yes, I, I actually remember the sixth form bit and I always sat with the girls. Ah, oh, there you go. You always wore the same uniform as I remember them. Yes, that's true, that's true, but can we just bury that one? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so, what were your favourite subjects at school, Chris? Well, I, uh, I used to enjoy the practical part of the science courses, really. 
Not to say that I was particularly good at them, but I used to enjoy the experiments especially. Especially when they went wrong? As well, just especially. There was, there was quite a bit of scope for things to go wrong, as, as I seem to remember. The uh, exploding constant volume gas thermometer springs to mind. Oh, yeah. Or the meter bridge that was left plugged in until it became red hot. <laughs> or the day that everyone had to go home with a poisoning during an experiment of smelling chlorine. Yes, but in fact, I think half the chemicals we're allowed to use in chemistry are banned for anyone to use now. <laughs> Probably, but no, I enjoyed the practical sciences. I think I joined the wrong subject, so. Um, what about your school uniform? What was that? I mean, looking at you now, you're a debonair, flash young man. Well, of course, uh, in those days, it was, it was relatively formal. I mean, the boys still wanted to wear blazers. And uh, up until the sixth form, you had to wear a tie at all times. Of course, the staff were even smarter. I mean, <laughs> there's no way a member of staff would be allowed to come to school wearing something like that, would they, friend? And I suppose their suits used to fit in those days. Oh, but no, no, they didn't. I remember Mr. McDermott. Don't you remember him? I do, I do. But his suit still doesn't fit, I seem to notice. <laughs> um, and what about the teachers? I mean, did you have any teacher that sort of you really did like that you still remember? Yes, I, uh, I used to like Tim Sale. Okay. He was known by the nickname of Fungus, I don't know. No. Well, for reasons which uh, I'm sure it's not a nickname that would, would ever be associated Can't with imagine. you, will you? But, uh, he was like, perhaps a little bit biased towards the boys in his teaching methods, and I think that probably used to amuse me and uh, a few of the other boys. Not, not to say that in any way he gave the girls a hard time, because... Uh, he gave everybody a hard he time. Gave quite, he gave everybody a <laughs> hard time, but no, I used, I used to like Tim Sale. He probably wouldn't say the same for me, but I used to, I used to like him. I think he was a character. Right. Um, and what about any teacher you were really frightened of or didn't like? Well, I think that would have to be Tim Sale. Really? You were frightened of him? <laughs> yes, and I didn't like him very much. <laughs> he could be an absolute teacher when he wanted to. You know? <laughs> he could, I don't understand it with these teachers. Myself. But that was a bit probably yeah. his most endearing fact as well. OK. Right, Chris, can you tell us any amusing experiences you had whilst you were at school? Well, I don't, nothing too shocking happened, really. I think it was all pretty, uh, pretty harmless schoolboy fun, as they would say. I seem to remember being banned from using the library, which at that time was the hall, um, throwing paper aeroplanes, does that ring any chord? Oh there was another chap with me, I can't remember his name now, but he's a teacher somewhere. Really? Uh, yeah. I know we had to spend all our free periods for the following fortnight sitting in with the secretaries in the office. Didn't it involve also a joke or something about a wild drill, was that? There might have been something written on one of the paper aeroplanes, but I can't, I can't remember that. I do remember Mr. Cottier was very uh, cross, that was the word, he was very cross. But when we approached him later to apologise for what we thought was childish behaviour, he had to say that in his sixth form he threw paper aeroplanes as well, although obviously it wasn't in his best interest to condone this sort of behaviour. But we do have good editing machinery here, so that's OK. <laughs> Another yeah. thing, a thing which springs to mind, that I suppose it still happens, you get a lot of childish crazes, you know, especially the older you get. I think the sixth form initiate crazes. So there was one craze for wearing daffodils. Now this craze... It went, hand in, it went hand in hand with another craze of wearing your wristwatch around your ankle, which uh, I can't even get it over my foot now, I don't think. But this business of wearing daffodils, there was one chap, <laughs> he used to play rugby, he teaches actually, yeah. But anyway, he uh, had this daffodil we uh, proudly displayed from his uh, breast pocket, and when it died, we arranged a quite complex burial and cremation of this daffodil, which involved taking a part of the parquet flooring, cremating the daffodil, and laying it to rest. I was wondering the other day if it was still there, actually. <laughs> Right, of all the new facilities, which do you find the most impressive? Well, um, music was something which is very dear to me and, and at the time wasn't really available as an option. I used to have to go down to Park Road to do it as an option. I'm glad to see that a, a music uh, room has been added. Also, the computing room, phenomenal, absolutely fabulous. I mean, of course, it's part of, it's part of everybody's lives now. And I think, at the time, it doesn't seem that long ago to think that pocket calculators were only being introduced. I mean, I... I did computing myself as an option, and it involved laboriously hand-punching out hundreds and hundreds of little holes on cards, which then had to be sent away to be processed at the University. You were good at that, weren't you? Punching the holes out. Yes. yes. Oh, I remember that. Yes. They all looked like Mickey Mouse, but none of them came back with any useful information on them, unfortunately. But no, I, of course, the only live computer time we had was on a modem, where we were allowed ten minutes a week to try and play a game, which came out on a printed sheet. So. Uh, I think it's nice to see the facility expanding. I just hope that it expands into all the other subjects as well, along the same way that the language labs and the you music... You were talking and that you'd like a link between music and the computers. Especially, especially within music um, and video. Uh, I mean, I think the whole thing really is 
part and parcel developing together. The, the, the computer aided design is developing at, at a very high rate. A lot of um, digital recording techniques are developing and editing techniques. So it's nice to be able to mix them all together into a multimedia experience rather than rigidly labeled as, say, computing or video or television. They, they should all perhaps be brought together under the one. Uh, and, and, and the other subjects, indeed. I mean, there's a great use in languages. And, and in the RE, your own subject, of course? Mm, yes, I'll just nod wisely to that one. It well, no, I mean... Can you tell us any amusing experiences you had while